Joining us now from Capitol Hill is Republican Senator Roger Wicker from the state of Mississippi. Senator, it's very good to see you. And certainly I could talk to you about this joint news conference that we're expecting, but I'm more interested in at least starting the conversation with a meeting you had earlier today with the man who hopes to be the next Supreme Court Justice, Neil Gorsuch. And, um, you know, I was hoping you'd spill the beans on the entire meeting and tell us, uh, tell us everything. So carry on. Mm -hmm. What was it like? Well, the, the, look, uh, Judge Gorsuch is... Uh, He's not only smart, but he's engaging, he's pleasant. I don't think he's going to scare anybody. And I think to the extent that Americans watch the hearings when they happen in two or three weeks, I think they'll be pleased. And, uh, and, and I think it'll help him quite a bit. Okay, I know you've been a supporter going in. Um, that said, I am curious to be serious about the, the news that's been uh, out there regarding uh, the comments that were supposedly made by... Um, Mr. Gorsuch to Senator Blumenthal that have been confirmed by others who are in that room. Did you guys have similar discussions about how the president characterizes members of the, uh, the uh, judicial branch? And if so, what did he say to you? I, uh, I asked him if uh, Senator Blumenthal uh, quoted him correctly, and, and basically his response is, I'm going to tell you exactly what I said, and you can decide for yourself if Senator Blumenthal uh, characterized him Right. Uh, accurately. I, I think basically, look, I know a lot of judges. I'm the son of a judge. Uh, members of the judiciary uh, are, are, are never happy when, when their independence uh, is being challenged. So I, I think the response, um, however mm -hmm. it was stated, was understandable, and I'm okay with it. I think probably okay. President Trump has also. Now, sometimes, Senator, I will miss something when I'm talking to somebody on Capitol Hill, but I did notice there that you told us he was going to tell you exactly what he said, but then you never told us what he said. So <laughs> may I ask you, what did he I, say? I, 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 I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, there, there was, uh, there, there was a, an expression of just what I said, that, that members of the judiciary... Uh, oftentimes are demoralized when uh, their independence is questioned. Okay, so we'll take that for, uh, for what it's worth and we'll read between the lines on that, Senator. The, yeah. the other things that are coming up in addition to what we've been talking about is um, we look for this news conference to begin soon in the East Room of the White House. Last night's ruling in the, in the Ninth Circuit, it went against the White House and we've been talking uh, today about options going forward from here. What do you think in terms of the president's executive order? Will we see him start anew and write some new executive orders on immigration, keep fighting this to the Supreme Court? What do you expect? You know, you had a great uh, conversation with Ken Cuccinelli about that, who's really a constitutional attorney. Let me just say, I, I think the Ninth Circuit gets reversed a lot. I think they're wrong in this case, and uh, probably they would be wrong again if, if we went in bank with the full. So you'd fight them for that reason to the Supreme Court? I, I, I think at some point they'll be reversed, and I don't know about the strategy of going to the Supreme Court. I heard some speculation uh, last night that this is the very sort of case where uh, Justice Kagan, for example, might uh, go over and join, uh, join the conservative uh, court on on this. I don't know about that. I, I, I'll say this. The president, I think, has the constitutional authority and also the statutory authority to, to do this temporary pause. And I think in the end, he'll be allowed to do it. Do you understand why some have said, though, that politically fighting this or continuing to do so in court after court is a maybe a distraction from other issues, for example, the economy, which did break through and become a big story yesterday when the president made some comments on tax cuts, the stock market, which we obviously follow closely, soared to record highs and is up again uh, today. But when you sure. get bogged down in an issue like this in the courts day after day with people like us providing analysis of it uh, over and over, that maybe it's a political distraction. Is that fair? I think we can walk and chew bubble gum at the same time, and the president can do uh, a number of issues simultaneously, and he's doing that. But, but I think this is important enough. These nations were identified by the Obama administration, and the president, I think, is, is following through uh, with a good order. The rollout uh, clearly was not artful, but I think he's within his rights to make us safer by, by taking a timeout. 
Let me ask you, uh, Senator, if I can, sorry for interrupting, about maybe one or two other subjects as we watch the East Room begin to fill up for this joint news conference with the Japanese Prime Minister uh, that is about to begin. And one is taxes. The President's comments yesterday was essentially, hey, I'll have something out there in the next two or three weeks that people are really going to like on taxes. Could be business taxes, could be individual tax rates, as Press Secretary seemed to suggest yesterday, it might be both. Now, that's just a proposal. It needs to get through you guys in the Congress to become law. What is your level of optimism in terms of getting tax reform passed? And, and, well, I, and the timetable as well. I think the timetable is probably longer than that. Uh, I, I want tax reform. As you know, we intend to do it through a reconciliation bill, which means we won't have to have the 60 votes that you typically have to have in the Senate. But uh, there are a number of details and a number of significant uh, differences. And uh, so it's going to take more than two weeks. But, uh, but I will really be interested in, in hearing what the administration proposes in this regard. Right. So he could have a proposal out there, say, in three weeks or whatever it may be. I don't think anybody expects anything to get past that quickly. But is the end of the year a realistic time frame for tax reform? Uh, I guess that would be realistic. You know, we're going to take Obamacare up first, right. and we're going to do it under one budget resolution that's going to take reconciliation, and then uh, and then we'll do the tax reform under the second budget resolution. The vice president entering the East Room now as they get set for that news conference. Uh, Senator, final thing on Obamacare. Let me ask you about that. Um, our own Jerry Willis was reporting about an hour ago on all the possibilities that are out there from your side of the aisle, not on a repeal of, 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 of um, the, pres the former president's health care law, but on a replacement for it. What are you in favor of? How do you get into details in, in, in a few seconds? I, I'm, I'm for keeping our campaign promises. I'm for replacing Obamacare with a market-based uh, program that allows a lot more choices, allows uh, the purchase of insurance across state lines, repeals the mandates both on employers and employees. Right. Okay. But you're for having a specific replacement in place almost simultaneously with the repeal, or is that going to be unfair? I think it needs to be in the statute uh, okay. to the extent reconciliation allows it, and I, it may be phased in. But the statute needs to be signed uh, almost simultaneously, yes, sir. Senator Wicker, Senator Roger Wicker out of the state of Mississippi, thank you very much for all the time. We really appreciate it. It's a good conversation as we get set for this news conference. Thanks for thank joining you. us.